He's the founder of One Team Global. He leads an example for all of us to follow. And he's a man about integrity with his word. He does what he says he's gonna do. And every example of his actions, in my experience, has been exactly what he said. We look towards people with vision to follow. And I know that I'm speaking for many in this room, if not everyone in this room, and all those that have chosen to be a part of One Team Global. Nathan, I'd follow you anywhere. Wow. He's a $20 million circle, member, founder of One Team about what is new skin here's what it is it's a chance for a person to do that 
to create income for life that will transform their whole life. Transform the life of their children, transform the life of their grandchildren. That's the opportunity that we have. Okay? So that's, that's what it is. Let's talk about why you should do it. Okay? Uh, let me... <laughs> you have that? Or I got it. Okay. So why should you do it? All right? Working a job, your economic risk is high. A lot of risk working a job. And your emotional satisfaction can be very low. Building a network, your economic risk is low. It's low in every respect. It doesn't take much money to start doing this. It's like nothing to start a business, right? And you also have low risk in terms of you have a chance now to create something economically in the future. At least you're in the right vehicle. You're in the right environment where at least it's possible. It's not possible in a job. Okay, so your economic risk is low in building a network and your economic potential and your emotional satisfaction can be really significant. So Diana and Charlie just did a, a very nice job of edifying me and of course it makes me feel great. That's really high emotional satisfaction, right? And so those things can happen to you here and they just can't happen like that really in any other vehicle or opportunity or chance that you would have in your life, right? So with minimal investment of money and high investment of sweat equity, you can create freedom, okay? That's it. That, that right there is why you should do this business. So we've talked about what it is, we've talked about why you should do it, and let's talk about how, okay? To me, it's so simple. We seem to overcomplicate things in life, and we certainly do that with this business. So what do you do? Learn and follow the system. Has that been repeated enough times today? Yes. Over and over and over again, right? That's because we forget. One thing human beings are really good at is forgetting. We forget why we chose to do something, why we made a commitment, you know. You know, why we started New Skin, we are good at forgetting. So we need repetition. We need to hear it over and over and over again so it becomes part of us, it becomes part of our personality. So follow the system too. Focus every day on your goal. You know, it's such an amazing thing that you can create your future in your mind before you create it in reality. And in fact, you must create it in your mind before you can actually create it in reality. That's a given. That's what we as human beings have the ability to do that no other form of life can do. We can actually reason and we can create in our minds. That is the power of creation. That's the genesis of change. That's the beginning of a new life and becoming a new person, is that you think differently than you thought before, right? I mean, literally, it is that simple. It's like such a fine line of how you think. You know, you can think one way and it can take you down an entirely different path, or you can just change that view, even just a little bit, and it can take you down a much better path. And so, we have the ability to think about our future and what we want it to be, and then we can write it down. And because we forget, we need to read it every day. So we write them down and we read them every day and we focus on our goal, okay? Distraction is a killer. Distraction just diffuses your energy and you go nowhere. Focus is hard to do consistently. It's a habit that you have to learn in your life how to focus and eliminate distractions. Everybody has distractions, don't they? You're not the only one who has distractions in your life, the things that come up. The people that are successful learn how to stay focused even during the distractions. They keep their eye focused on the target and where they want to go. And last is to consistently 
recruit people, and sell product. I mean, that's, that's the consistency that creates the skill set. It's the consistency that provides your availability to your team all the time so that they can trust you, so they can count on you. They know you can be there because you're consistent. You're not flaky, you don't show up sometimes and then disappear, and show up and disappear, right? Consistency with that focus can accomplish anything. It can accomplish any goal, whatever that might be. So it's so very simple. So why don't we do these things? There's a bunch of reasons, but let's talk about probably the main, the main reason, okay? And this is what stops people, it's called fear, all right? The one thing, really the only thing we have to do in this business is talk to people. And the one thing that most people will do almost anything to avoid is talking to people. That's a problem. That's the only thing we really have to do. And it's the one thing we try to avoid, right? Why do we have that disconnect? You know, why do people avoid talking to people? We've all had it happen. We're someplace, at an airport, you know, at the grocery store, at a bank, you know, at our children's activity or wherever we are, and we see a person and we think, I should talk to that person. And we start to think, how, how am I gonna say it? What, what am I gonna do when I walk up to that person? And then we chicken out, and we, ah, they probably wouldn't be interested anyway, you know? And we make the decision for them instead of just letting them make the decision, right? I wanna caution you to not be so presumptuous that you think you know what other people are gonna do. That's a big, a big decision you're making in their behalf that can be you know, completely different than what that person would want, right? Our job is to give everybody the opportunity. You know, whether they accept it or not is up to them, but our job is not to try to predetermine or make decisions for other people. We just put it in front of them. That's all we can do, right? And they'll either say yes or no, and that's fine. We have fear of approaching people. We have fear of saying the wrong thing. I want you to know that you cannot say the wrong thing to the right person. If they're ready, you can say almost anything and they'll say, sounds great, I'm ready, sign me up. On the other hand, you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. You can give the best presentation of your life and they'll look at you with a blank stare and say, I don't get it. You know, and that's what happens. And you can say, well, what do you mean you don't get it? That was the best presentation I've ever done. How can you not get that? They're simply not ready. So don't be afraid of that. We're afraid of our own failure. We start to think, what if I put this out there? What if I you know, shoot my mouth off and I state my goals publicly? I go public with what I'm trying to do and then I fall flat. How embarrassing will that look? Let me tell you something. It's way better to try and fail than to have never, ever ventured and tried at all, okay? Every failure is only a failure if you stop, okay? As long as you keep working forward, it's just a learning process, that's all it is. Fear of the failure of others. This is something that happens to people after two, three, four, five, six, seven years in this business. They've sponsored friends, family, people who they brought into this business who didn't make it. And when they quit or they lost their belief in new skin, it was painful for you as their sponsor. And so sometimes we think it's so painful, we will stop recruiting. Or we then increase our judgment of whether we think people can do it or not. Please don't make that decision for other people. All you can do is give them the opportunity it's up to them to run with it. You don't need to be responsible for every person. You can't carry every person on your back, okay? You can't make them do it. All you can do is offer them the opportunity and let them see the vision. At, at some point, it's up to them to take the ball and run with it, right? 
And so that's another fear that people have, and they stop recruiting because they think, oh, they don't understand how hard it's going to be. They don't understand how many no's they're going to have to go through. Well, tell them, okay? And if they quit, they quit. That's their choice. It's not your choice. You don't quit. You move on. You go recruit more people. That's just the part of what we do in this business because we can't force people to do anything. They can do it of their own free will. Sometimes we have fear of what others will think of us. Maybe we're a professional. Maybe we think that we're really good. Maybe we think we're really neat. Maybe we think we're above some of this. And sometimes we worry if people will look at us differently. Maybe we'll lose some friends because we started to approach them about doing our business. There is no need to lose any friends in this business. You know, it's people's choice. If they want to do it, great. If they don't want to do it, that's okay too. You're just going to move ahead. You've got your eye fixed on your goal. It doesn't matter what other people <coughs> think. When I, when I started New Skin, we had 17 products. They were all skin care products. I had never used skin care in my life. And I thought, am I going to be a skincare salesman? Am I going to be an Avon man? <laughs> that thought made me shudder a little bit. And I realized, you know, it's not about being a skincare salesman and it's not about any single product. What is it about? It's a chance to create a distribution network that can create income. For the rest of your life. And there's a lot worse products to sell than skincare. You could be selling, you know, dumpster services, right? Or something else, right? So yeah, this is way better than doing that. We help people to live better longer, to look better longer. We have great things that we offer people. And so don't ever be embarrassed about new skin or what you're doing. If you don't understand that, you should take some advice from Darlene Shear. She's the first team elite in the country of Canada, and I was doing a meeting for her in uh, Ottawa, Canada, many years ago, and a man walked up dressed much like I am right now. At the end of the meeting, he came to the front of the room, and Darlene was speaking to him, and I was kind of sitting there listening to this conversation, and he said, oh, but I'm a professional. You know, I spent all these years gaining my degrees, my education. I've got many years in my career. You know, what will people think of me if I, you know, do new skin? And he was really concerned. Well, Darlene and I weren't concerned at all, right? And Darlene grabbed him by the tie, pulled his face close to hers, <laughs> and said, Roger, I want you to go home tonight. I want you to take all your new skin products and dump them in your bathtub. I want you to take your clothes off and sit in those products until you get it. <laughs> yeah, so don't be afraid that you're gonna you know, have others think ill of you or something. And lastly, sometimes we have fear of our own success. Sometimes people say to themselves, what would happen if I did make $10 million? What kind of person would I be? You know, would I be able to control myself? It's hard to control yourself, right? Yeah, it's called discipline, right? So because you have money or you have, you know, capability, to do a lot of different things. It's like Blake Roney has always said, write down today the kind of person you want to be when you're successful so you don't forget who you want to become, right? So that's an important thing. Blake's always said, don't leave your family behind, right? Take your family with you on the journey, you know? You don't do new skin and forget your family, you know? You bring your family and you do new skin. And so those are important things to remember and some people are scared about how they would react if they had all the money they needed, that was no issue, and you know, hopefully they wouldn't destroy themselves, right? So write it down now, the kind of person you wanna be. Okay, um, fear is interesting because it paralyzes us. Here's, here's kinda what happens when you have fear. 
When you have fear in your body, it, brings, it starts with doubt. You start to doubt. Well, maybe it's not as good as Nathan said it was. Or maybe the products aren't quite as good as Joe Chang was saying they were. Or, you know, maybe it's harder than they said it would be. And we start to have doubt. We start to have discouragement. Okay? Then we get distracted. And as we get distracted, we're not very diligent. Okay, we start to not show up as much. And then finally, we disbelieve. We start to not believe it anymore. And then we're gone. That's what happens, okay? So that's the genesis of all that is fear. It starts this downward spiral, right? Did you catch those five Ds? Doubt, discouragement, right? Distraction, lack of diligence, and finally, disbelief, and you're gone. So instead of this downward spiral, what we want to do is reverse that. We want to get an upward spiral going, right? It's the same thing I said before. It's that razor's edge, you know? You can fall on one side of your thought process, or you can fall on the other side of your thought process, and you are the only one who can control that. I love hearing Charlie Patterson describe OTG on demand. When I was two weeks into the new skin business, I had a very negative encounter with a very close friend of mine, and it almost knocked me out of new skin. And the only thing that saved me that day, the reason I'm here now, is I had a cassette tape. This is before CDs existed. I had a cassette tape that was from a new skin leader who was speaking about why he was doing new skin. I put that in my tape player in my car, and it saved me. Why? Because it changed my thoughts. It took me from doubt and discouragement, and it put me on the other side of the thought process to believe, to believe it was possible. All you have in this business is your belief. It is fragile. You have to guard your, your attitude and your belief, okay? You can't let people destroy it or trash it because somebody can be logical and they can convince you that it's not going to work and it can't work or it won't work for you. And you can be destroyed that way. And I always look at the people who get destroyed and I ask, so, so what was the outcome? What was the purpose of that destruction? What did they do? They quit new skin and they went back to a job or something so ridiculous. You know, what's, the, what's gonna change? What good did the destruction do? Did it save them from new skin or something? No, it put them right back in this place where they're never gonna accomplish much. Never gonna have much satisfaction and all those things, right? So, so don't lose your belief, you know? You've gotta protect it, you've gotta feed it. You've got to put positive things in your brain every day. That's why you literally cannot live without general's calls and without OTG on demand, right? We do general's calls every morning in North America. People can dial in and listen to what's up for the day, right? And get a positive shot at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's critical. You don't have that? Then you better get OTG on demand. So you've got something positive going in your brain so your belief, your attitude is protected. It's really important. Every day we go out and people beat up on your attitude. They'll tell you it won't work. You know, you can't do it. What are you doing that? I don't like those things. Those are pyramid schemes. We've heard it all, okay? It does work. The fact is, it does work. You know, we can't even read the names of Blue Diamonds anymore. There's so many of them. They just walk, they scream across the stage. Hurry, we've got more team elites behind you. Right? Don't tell us it doesn't work. We've seen it. And so that's it. Don't get in this downward spiral where you're paralyzed and you don't take action, right? Just remember when unbelief rules our thoughts, fear takes over, right? Fear is not a, a good thing. Fear is a negative thing. It doesn't come from any good place, right? Blake Tillotson just mentioned that today from stage, that it's a false experience appearing real. That's what fear stands for, false experience appearing real. It's, in, it's an intangible, it's not, even, it's not even real, right? So the cure is to 
believe in the opportunity, right? Belief in yourself. Belief that you will find the right people. Belief in this company. You come to an event like a convention, does it bolster your belief in the company? I mean, if you're going out of here this weekend and your belief in the company was not bolstered, then you don't have a pulse. <laughs> okay, another word for belief is faith. Isn't it? Yes. It's believing in something that's not tangible, something you can't see. That's how we define faith, having faith, right? This is interesting. This is a great quote from Joel Steen, right? Fear and faith have something in common. Both ask us to believe in something we cannot see. Isn't that interesting? They're both exactly opposite feelings, right? States of our mind. These are states of our mind. And you can't see either one. You have to make a choice. You have to proactively put great things to build up your belief in your mind every day. And that will make a big difference in your business. Faith and fear cannot exist in the same body at the same time. If you're running around in fear all the time, you're not going to progress very fast in building this business. So either one or the other is going to take the upper hand. Okay? As you take consistent action, you'll see results. And that will increase your belief. Okay? Do you think my belief is pretty high in your skin? <laughs> You know, there's a point where belief, where you hope something's true, you believe it's true, it turns into knowledge. There's a place where you get, you come to, where you are so sure about your future, about what's going to take place, that it's not even belief anymore. You know it, right? You know it's gonna happen. That's where I'm at. That's where you can get. When we recruit somebody, it's just a spark, it's just a, a glimpse. It's a word or two that resonates in their mind where they go, maybe, maybe there's a chance here for me. That's just a little spark of belief, right? So we try to fan that spark and we introduce them to other people and we bring them to other events and we show them other videos and materials and talk to them, you know, and we try to fan that into a flame of belief, and then we've got to feed that belief. We have to feed it every day. And then that grows up eventually into knowledge. You know, then they're there. Then they're really, really powerful and they're gonna be here the rest of their life. So, this blue circle around this person can represent you. Every one of us has a comfort zone. The blue is the comfort zone that we all live in. If all we do is stay in that comfort zone, life is very safe. A good uh, friend of mine, uh, one of my frontline blue diamonds named Mr. Sandy Kellen, said, Nathan, my father told me one time that if you're really, really, really careful in life, nothing really good or really bad will ever happen to you. <laughs> you just stay in that little teeny track and just be, and that's your life. That's what most people's lives are. Back and forth, they're working home, back and forth every day. <laughs> nothing really good, nothing really bad happening to them. That is not living life, okay? So you have to get out of your comfort zone. <coughs> By definition, it's going to be uncomfortable. Does that make sense? If you stay in your comfort zone, you'll be comfortable. That's just okay. If you get out of your comfort zone, expect to be uncomfortable. That's just the way it goes, okay? You may say, that's risky. I'm, I'm outside. It's risky now. Maybe, you know, it's perception. I would say you, you have way more risk staying inside the comfort zone because you'll end up toast. You won't have any money, right? Financially and so forth. It's not really risky in our vehicle to get outside. You're not going to lose your house. Nobody can put enough money into New Skin to ever say New Skin made me go bankrupt. They can't. You can never put enough money in to do that, okay? So they can't say that. You can say that about every other business. It could take you down. Not this one, okay? So it's really not risky. It is risky emotionally. It will challenge you. 
It'll maybe give you some discouraging times, but that's life, right? Would you rather experience the emotions of life, the ups and some downs as well, because they go together, instead of just <laughs> Would you? I would, you know? Because that's living life. That's where you're gonna change, and that's where you're gonna grow. People will say, well, this is hard. This is hard. Yeah, change is hard. But it's the only way forward. It's the only way. There isn't another way, right? If we don't change and grow, we die. There is no status quo, is there? Can you just stand in the same place? You can't. You can't stand in the same place. Just picture yourself in a, a river of water. If you just try to stay in the same place, you know, you're just going to get swept along wherever. You've got to, like, push, okay? You've got to make sure you go forward. All right, so what does it take to do it? You know, this is the fail-safe formula. And I know this is brutal, and you look at it and you think, oh, my goodness, is that really it? Okay, well, let's assume for a moment this is what it's going to take. Right here on the screen, okay? You want to be a blue diamond in this business? That's what it's going to take right there. So is it worth it? Is it? Most of the people, the vast majority are going to say to you, no thanks, not interested, right? You might end up giving 500 presentations. Maybe 25% of all the people you talk to, you can give them a half-based demo, you can scan them, you can give them a one-on-one -on -one or a webinar, a business briefing of some kind, right? And so forth. That's your presentation, okay? Maybe 25%. So if you only talk to four people, you're only going to get one presentation. And you probably won't even get that because you talk to the four when you're new and you're not really saying it too good, okay? So you got to talk to a lot of people. That consistency will make you really good, right? Maybe uh, out of those 500 people, 75%, it's actually about 60, 66%, about two-thirds will say, no, or I will use some product. Okay, I'll buy some product, but I don't want to do the business, or I'm just not interested at all, okay? Let's say you sponsor 125 people on your front line, okay? Out of all those people, about a third of all the people you present to will, will sign up on your front line, okay? And that's after all the contacts, right? It's way down the funnel. About 10% of all the people you sign up on your front line will become executives on your front line. That's it. So we're talking just a few percentages of all the people you'll talk to will end up sticking with you and become leaders in your business. Okay? That's why you can't try to carry everybody. You can't carry anybody. You just gotta give them the opportunity and it's their choice, right? And you know that most people will not do it, so you don't get upset if somebody quits. You just <laughs> keep moving forward. And you will find the people that will make your business grow and make you a success in this company. I, I tell you, that will happen as long as you go through the numbers, all right? That's it. I mean, there's no secrets, right? That's what it takes to do it. And that is no different than if you're trying to be the top person in insurance sales or being the top stockbroker or the top bond trader or the top car salesman or the top real estate agent. It's about the top 1% that really make all the money, okay? So you have to improve yourself. You gotta protect your attitude. You gotta get out of your comfort zone. You gotta embrace change. You gotta love change. You gotta get better. You just keep moving forward, you know? It's just really kind of a war of attrition. The people that just stay long enough, improve enough, are consistent enough, pick up the skill set, and they become blue diamonds. And many other people who came and left could have certainly been Blue Diamonds or Team Elise, but they just were too impatient. Or something else knocked them out. Their doubt and their discouragement and their fear took them out of the business, right? So that's why you make sure you feed your attitude. Is it worth it to do that, be a Blue Diamond? I think that was the average income last year. I think it's worth it to do it. Where else are you going to get $45,000 a month of income for the rest of your life. Where's that gonna happen? I don't know. I've never seen any place else where that'll happen, right? Okay. Let me just close with uh, a poem. I've got several poems that I really like, and I'm sorry, translators, this will be a little bit difficult. 
So we will go slow, okay? It's called good timber. The tree that never had to fight for sun and sky and air and light, but stood out in the open plain and always got a share of rain, never became a forest king, but lived and died a scrubby thing. The man who never had to toil to gain and farm his patch of soil, who never had to win his share of sun and sky and light and air, never became a manly man, but lived and died as he began. Good timber does not grow with ease. The stronger the wind, the stronger the trees. The further the sky, the greater the length. The more the storm, the more the strength. By sun and cold, by rain and snow, in trees and men, good timbers grow. Where thickest lies the forest growth, we find the patriarchs of both. And they hold counsel with the stars, whose broken branches show the scars of many winds and much of strife. This is the common law of life. You need to have a few scars, take a few, you know, hits, right? It makes you better. It makes you a better person. It makes you a better spouse, friend, husband, father, child, you know, mother, daughter, right? Those are the experiences of life. What I love about a new skin is it tests your mental. It makes you go through the full range of all human emotions. And it puts you through them pretty fast. And so it's the, it's the accelerated game of life here. And if you'll embrace it and not fight it and take advantage of it, you'll come out of this not just with financial security and time freedom, but you'll come out of this as a person who has developed their character in a way that can bless many other people, help many other people in their lives. Okay, we're all done. I'd like to have the uh, global board come back up one more time. You guys just come up quickly, and then we'll wrap this meeting up. Thank you so much for staying to the bitter end today. Are you starting to catch the vision of what can happen as we work together? Yeah.